Hi, everyone. My name is Sanya Irfan. My pronouns are she, her. I am a South Asian woman with hair tied in a ponytail, wearing a headset, as I usually do, a pink shirt and a pink scarf. And I'm calling in from Karachi, Pakistan. I am the program manager at Yeah Impact and an impact producer on the Can You Hear Us campaign. And first off, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who have joined um, and all of our incredible panelists as well. We're so grateful you could join us today. I'm going to get this event started by sharing with you a very special message from one of the activists in the film. So hold on tight while I bring that up on screen. Hi everyone, I am Anwina de Wever. I'm a Belgian climate and human rights activist and I'm a part of the Youth for Climate movement, which is basically the national Belgian movement from Fridays for Future International. My activism started about three years ago when I decided to host the first ever climate strike on a Friday in Belgium and thousands of people showed up. The first week we had 3,000 people, then we had 15,000 people, then we had 40,000 people and before we know it, Every week, month after month, thousands of people were joining us on the streets. We did this by collaborating with famous people, with experts, with scientists. We tried to make big campaigns. We tried to involve as many people as possible, make our movement as diverse as possible, open public debate, go to TV shows, go to events, have speeches all around the country and make the climate emergency and the climate topic one of the most spoken topics um, of this year about. After one year of my activism, I got the chance to go to the Amazon forest. Um, and I sailed there, taking a sailing boat by six weeks because I don't fly. And when I arrived there, um, I had a complete eye-opening moment. A cidade aí nunca andou no mato. Só fica lá na, na, na cidade, acondicionado, sentado. Empregado dele cuidando. Nós não, nós anda trabalhando. I realized that a lot of my climate activism was not actually about just reducing emissions, but it was about tackling a system that is not respecting planetary boundaries or human rights. I met communities in the Amazon forest and I met leaders, indigenous leaders of the Amazon forest that lost their entire community or family because of the Xingu river being completely intoxicated by gold mines that are put there by the Western world. I met people there that have been fighting for the Amazon forest their entire lives, not because they chose to be an activist, but because they have to, because their livelihoods are in danger and because their rights are not being respected. And so when people ask me, yeah, yeah, the climate crisis, we know, but when are we actually going to see those consequences? You're actually asking, when am I going to see those consequences? Because it is happening all around the world to millions of people. So I'm asking you to join us in the fight. I'm asking you to stop applauding and join us in the march. And I hope that this movie inspires you to do so. I hope that this movie shows you that no one is too small to make a difference and that you have the power to decide what part of this story you want to be on and what your role in this story can be. I hope that after this movie you feel empowered enough to go back to your country or your local community or wherever you come from and start talking to the people that are doing these things because it's happening everywhere and it is time that we stop applauding them. It's time that we stop um, appreciating them for what they do and, and giving them shoulder pets but actually join them in the fight, join them in the march, being vocal about it and this is also where I'm looking at you and where I would like to address you. I decided to be an activist. I decided to face the climate emergency. I decided to look at the fact that there is no future waiting for me if I don't spend my time on fighting this crisis. And I'm looking at you to do the same. We all have a responsibility in this story, some of us more than others, but we all can do something. And I think the biggest threat towards the climate crisis is that people don't understand their own power. We all can influence all the people around us. We can all make decisions about how we want to live and refuse to participate in a system that is clearly destroying the world. I truly hope that the film helps you reflect on what each of our responsibilities are. I would also like to take this opportunity 
uh, to mention that this screening is presented by Can You Hear Us to the UNFCCC community, as well as European-based frontline organizations, including Film Strike, Filmmakers for Future, Wildlife, as well as Youth for Climate Movements and Fridays for Future in Germany. And if you're interested in becoming more involved in climate action after the film, please check out the website of the Impact Campaign, www.canyouhearus.org, to find an action guide, a guide to intergenerational conversations and more. Um, and I hope you enjoy. I'm Greta. And please stay for discussion after the screening with climate frontline activists. Hey, Greta. Oh, that film was... Um... Yeah, that was really powerful. That was, that was taking me back to um, that year of 2019, which was a super powerful year. Um, cool, welcome everybody. Um, so hello, I'm Alfie Warren Knight. I will um, I will be moderating discussion today. Uh, I'm wearing a black t-shirt. I have this uh, shaggy haircut going on, which I've grown out in the last year. And I'm really excited to be here with all of you. Um, please do forgive me if I stumble at any point, I'm still quite new to public speaking. Um, and yeah, I use uh, he, him pronouns. Um, I'm, uh, so I'm the founder of the Film Strike for Climate Movement, which I'll provide a very, very quick explanation of before we move forward. Um, so Film Strike was catalyzed during the height of the global uh, protest during 2019. Uh, we are one of young entertainment activists' earliest partners um, since all of us climate, environmental and social justice uh, screen initiatives started connecting around two years ago. Um, so imagine a united global film and television industry that values social and environmental impact uh, as much as it currently values entertainment and audience ratings. That's our vision, at least. Uh, film Strikes a initial tool was direct action. Um, so we've organised two um, film and TV industry marches in solidarity with the Fridays for Futures uh, movement um, and are, are currently organising an even larger mobilisation during COP26. Uh, we've also begun collecting existing impact resources to help lay the foundations of a system change project in aid of creating uh, this shift after taking a six month uh, system change course. Uh, but like many things worth doing, it's hard. And I've learned that as an activist to be truly transforming the world, you must be truly transforming yourself with those around you. It's a good thing then that we are constantly in good company, surrounded by and supported by folk who have found ways to align actions with beliefs as we do everything we can for diverse and just worlds. Okay, uh, so less about us. Um, thank you uh, to all of the UN attendees and climate organizers for being here today. We're uh, so excited to be gathered virtually here to discuss the film that you've all just watched and touch on the timely and critical organizing of local and national climate action. Um, today's panel discussion will focus on current events such as the upcoming German election, uh, and the release of the sixth IPCC report, um, youth organizing and local climate action, um, the role of storytelling in climate action as we celebrate the international year of the creative economy for sustainable development. So I'm excited to be moderating a brief discussion where you'll hear from some incredible climate activists, Dorte Schneider, Adelaide Charlier, and, um, and Alyssa Ob Ob Obonk. Um, I'm going to let each of them introduce themselves before we dive into a few questions. Um, and if time allows, we'll open the floor for questions the audience may have for our panelists. Um, would anybody like to, any of the panelists like to introduce themselves first? Go, uh, if not, Anna, go ahead, Alyssa, go ahead. Um, okay, so I'm Alyssa Obonk, I'm a French and German. I'm a filmmaker and I work as a producer and green consultant um, in, and I'm based in Paris. Hi, I am Adelaide Charlier. I am a climate and human rights activist from Belgium. Um, I am part of the movement Youth for Climate with, here in Belgium, which is a branch of Fridays for Future. And uh, actually, I am working a lot with uh, Anuna de Weaver, who was at the start of this uh, screening. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much me. I'm also a student and uh, working a lot on all these climate questions and with a lot of activists uh, that were in this movie. Hello, I'm Dorte. I live in Portugal besides having been born and raised in Germany. Um, it's an enormous pleasure to be here. I'm still a bit emotional because I had not watched the film yet. So it, I'm just trying to digest a little bit. Um, I'm 
very active with a movement called Filmmakers for Future, which I joined last year. Um, this whole issue made me actually change my career from being a first AD on uh, film productions to becoming a green consultant. So um, trying to change something within the world that I know. Amazing, thank you guys. Yeah, I'm feeling uh, super grateful to be here with you guys, much such good company. Um, so I'll start with the questions. Our first question for Adelaide is, um, so since the beginning of 2020, communities all over the world have been grappling with organizing and mobilizing in a time where we are facing a global pandemic, civil unrest and increasing natural disasters. How do you feel that the global events of the past year and a half have furthered the urgent call for, for citizens, governments, businesses and politicians regarding the climate crisis? Okay, thank you very much for, for the question. I think um, it really depends on what uh, do we mean by events. Uh, there are so many uh, events that have been organized by also institutions, by also companies. Uh, but what I see that were the most impactful, at least what I saw around me uh, that had impacts on youth around me. And through uh, after watching this movie, of course, it's um, the strong mobilization organized by youth, by young people that are uh, conscious, that has taken the time and had the privilege to get aware and start uh, reaching. Uh, and, and because they had th that access to the information, they have access to um, now they have access and they have the responsibility to share this information and to keep warning politicians and uh, adults about these questions. And I think these international events, and to be more precise, I, will, I think one of the uh, events that has the most impact today to put pressure on politicians or uh, on um, CEOs or on companies uh, or on just uh, our educational system around this uh, climate question, uh, it is actually the global strikes which have happened all over the world. And as you see, we saw it in the movie, uh, it still happens. For example, there is one actually uh, next week on the 24th of September. So they, these global strikes happen all over the world where youth mobilize at the same moment and say, okay, now adults, we got to move it. We got to go for it because we're talking about a crisis. And I think since um, this movement has grown throughout the entire world, I think this has really shown that we uh, don't like, we whatever our different our differences, if we have, of course we have differences in language, we have borders between us. We have seas that separate us. We have different cultures, but all of this doesn't stop us from working together and, say, and seeing that we are facing an emergency and that we have to uh, face it together. Wherever we are in the world, we will have to do something about it. And then there is a whole question about social justice. So that means that me as a young, white privileged girl from Belgium, I actually have more responsibility and therefore I need to be able to move uh, even more uh, my, my country and, and start raising even more awareness towards the adults in charge here in my country because they are responsible historically for a big amount of the disasters that we are seeing today. So I think there is also a really important question of social justice and that's why international events are very important to raise international awareness but every youth that i see around me from this movement actually also work individually in their own countries and that is also very impactful and very important uh, especially for me here in belgium with the movement of youth for climate since we are in brussels and there is it is the capital of uh uh, it's the inter institutional capital of Europe, and therefore we, ha we have a really important uh, leverage here to put pressure on these institutions, and uh, we are doing it as much as possible. So to quickly answer again the, the question, I think that for me, awareness is present on a global scale, uh, much more than uh, before, uh, so than a few years ago. That has changed for sure, but what has not changed is the actions that can be taken to face the emergency. 
So we are still not there and events to not only spread awareness, but put pressure to make sure that actions follow these words that has to continue. And that's why we need to keep going in the streets like we have seen uh, in that movie. Amazing, thank you very much, Adelaide. Um, yeah, that's powerful stuff, the solidarity around the world. Um, so this is a question is for everybody. Um, the IPCC report states that human activity is changing the climate in unprecedented and irreversible ways. Um, what are some immediate actions you feel that your respective local and state governments should be taking in fighting the climate crisis? <laughs> Um, uh, as I said, I live in Portugal. This is a country which has a, most of its population living on the, by the coast. We will have a massive issue with um, rising sea level probably. And we already have uh, wildfires every summer. We have something called the wildfire season. Um, we have drought issues in more than half of, um, of the territory. And yet um, our government is right now discussing um, where to build the next big airport. So I think really, although uh, Portugal is um, quite committed, at least on the theoretical side, on the practical side, it looks totally different. And I've read a study where um, it says that the carbon budget for this country will be spent depending on, on the factors that you use somewhere between 26 and um, 2035. So I really don't think um, expanding infrastructures of highly polluting um, industries as, as um, the, the flight aviation industry is a good idea. So I want more awareness from our politics here. And also there will be um, local elections here in, on the same weekend when Germany elects the new government. And here almost none of the, of the, uh, of the lists is even referring the word climate crisis or climate change for that matter. And I think what really needs to be done in, in a country which is already highly hit and will be further hit if you look at the IPCC report, then measures to educate the people and to prepare them for what is there to come should be on top of the list, mitigation, um, awareness, uh, sensibility. That's it from my side. I feel like there's uh, a lot that we have to do to reduce the impact of climate change. Of course, there's, I mean, of course, uh, stop building uh, airports and reducing flights and uh, changing a lot of systemic things. But what really frightens me is also that we have to do so much to adapt to the consequences. I think the IPCC report was really clear on that, that while well, the climate change is happening now, and I mean, we have seen the summer like, with the droughts and the fires and the, um, the uh, sea level rise everywhere, and I don't think our governments are doing enough to prepare us for um, the changes that are coming and that are already here. And yeah, I guess that's that's one of the issues I would want them to to raise and to act on now and not react once it's too late. Um, maybe on my side to keep uh, going. Um, I think that. There are so many things that should be done. There is a list and if uh, politicians uh, need a list, they can find it easily by just listening to the experts with our movement here and use for climate. Uh, Belgium, we have actually worked with more than a hundred experts to write down the next 15 steps that Belgium can take directly right now to, um, to implement the transition. And this uh, report came out more than two years ago, but has never, been taken, like put in place by our governments. In these, uh, in these steps, there are uh, things like uh, helping to uh, transition, like helping citizens to transition by allowing them easily to um, isolate their houses. Uh, that could be sounds simple, but is actually super crucial. And then one main thing that actually should be. The, the, the first um, step is stopping all the investments into fossil fuel and stopping uh, every 
aspect of our society that is uh, we we are today sorry living in a, a society that is addicted to fossil fuel and it's a switch that we have there that we have to make and we know that the main problem uh, starts there so i think by doing that we will also be forced to therefore afterwards change very deeply our ways that we live on this planet and I think the, the rest will help uh, by following up since we will not have the choice anymore. So that's clearly the first step that we, that we should be doing today for me. Thank you, guys. Um, the next question is um, one for Dorte and Elisa. Uh, films like I Am Greta have the opportunity to harness the power of storytelling to inspire climate action and hope for the future. How do we need to reimagine the future in order to inspire climate action and how can we incorporate these reimaginations into our storytelling efforts? As a filmmaker, I really believe in the power of stories to change the world and to tackle the global issues that we currently face. And I think we need way more emotionally engaging stories that show people facing and feeling and, and also moving through their fear and helplessness um, and to show people who become part of a solution either in a small way, in a local way, or in a very large and global way. Um, because I think we all heard the hard facts, we read the IPCC report, we've listened to speeches, um, but uh, with storytelling and films and TV, I feel like we can um, show emotions and I feel like emotions um, are more powerful to grasp uh, the facts and turn them into action. And um, when we see the films that are uh, tackling climate change, it's mostly uh, dystopian post-apocalyptic stories. And I feel like we need more stories to dream and to stay positive and to see solutions uh, to the crisis because uh, honestly, I don't really wanna live in uh, those post-apocalyptic movies that we see. Um, and that's why as a producer, I really try to work on impact films and um, trying to uh, develop stories that help us face reality and um, imagine possible futures. Um, we as filmmakers, we have an incredible power we might not be aware of. And because whatever it is we put on screen, people watch. So we can put on screen the world as we would like it to be. We have to put on screen the world as it is, which I don't see very much. Of course, we have to dream, but um, people only believe that something exists when they see it often enough, when they hear about it often enough. So I think there's it, it's combined. Of course, I'm, I don't think there should be too much doom and gloom, because what we need to do is, especially now after this IPCC report, everybody's constantly referring to, uh, which probably dragged all of us into desperation for at least a week, I speak for myself here. Um, now we have to transform that that emotion it gave us into something um into some sort of motivation give up a resignation so let us create something on screen that we strive for and that we believe in and let's get rid of old uh, stereotypes which we have seen in so many films which show the world which led us to where we actually are right now so i think there's a big responsibility and from my point of view not only in the way what we put on screen because my job is to work behind the screen but also how we actually produce films and, and film production has a massive footprint which really needs to be taken down and can be taken down which is why i changed career and maybe to continue on this idea of um, movies i just maybe want to give an example i think alisa for sure knows the movie because he said that you speak french or also are from france the film demain it's called tomorrow from Cyril Dion, and it's really impressive because for me at least i just uh, at that moment when i was watching it a student it allowed me to see that uh, people are already doing it. You know, it's happening. It's not a, a, a promise from politicians or something that scientists are warning us about. Change is actually happening. And what's super inspiring is that people are moving. So where I get my energy from as an activist to keep going is to see that actually 
people are doing it. They are not waiting for promises or for transitions to be there. They are starting the transitions. And now it's about other citizens to show their support and to uh, be there also for these citizens who are changing and, and helping them and, 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 you know, together going for that. But of course, let's not forget that for most of these people, it's a privilege to be able to start a transition. So that's why we need the help of politicians. And that's why I, I think that for me, the first action that I should be doing as a student is putting pressure on politicians to make sure that the transition can be just, that we can have everyone that has access to this transition. But it's super inspiring to see everybody who is already starting and showing that it is possible and that it's not at all taking anything away from our lives that we have today, except for uh, sur consumption, sur uh, consumation, sorry, in French, I forgot how we say, but extra consumption, how do we say? I forgot, but like, you know what I mean? Except for all these material aspects that actually don't necessarily bring us more than direct pleasure. So it's, it's great to see uh, many of these uh, changes already happening around the world and, and wanting to be part of it. Amazing, thank you guys. Yeah, I'm also um, diehard passionate about all of that stuff as well. Um, okay, um, this will go on to our last question um, and it's to Adelaide again. Um, given that we are still very much advocating for climate justice in a virtual space, um, how do you suggest that others can get involved given that some may not feel comfortable or may not even be able to um, attend in-person strikes? That's for Adelaide. Yeah, it's a very good question because I, I just said before, I think the main action should be, you know, going in the streets, but um, there is so many other ways also to act. I mean, it sounds uh, maybe little when we say, you know, uh, first of all, we should really get informed, inform ourselves in un understanding what's going on. And in parallel, uh, for me, uh, it would be the... the to inform yourself and to act. And on the actions, it means personal change, which actually has an impact on uh, companies, on the politicians. Because if you, for what example, your personal change is to decide that you will only buy local food, that you will only buy in vrac, uh, so it means with no plastic. Um, if you will only, um, you will not buy fast fashion anymore. You will start uh, traveling only by uh, public transport. It sounds maybe little because you're like, I'm the only one who's doing it. But actually what we have seen these past years is that so many actually people have transitioned and decided to do that, that now companies are seeing uh, the change and they are seeing that citizens are actually preferring this kind of living and they are adapting. So let's be careful for some of it. Uh, it's it's still just words and, you know, a bit there to to show that they are supporting the message for citizens who are who are moving into transition. But at least they hear and they see that citizens are moving and they don't have the choice but to follow. And I actually also did a, a year uh, in, as an internship in the European Parliament. And what I saw is that politicians do the same. They, they will never put something on the table if they don't, if they are not sure they will have support from citizens. And therefore we have to be able to show the lead. And we always think, we always think that the leaders are the CEO and politicians, but we are actually the leaders and they are looking at us and they are following us. So without knowing it, we are influencing them. And I think it is the greatest power that we have, but that we, minimize or deny because we don't we are not aware of it and the most important today is to realize the power as citizens that we actually have and that we can take so if it's not comfortable to go in the streets or to skip school it is maybe comfortable to change your habits in a few ways today or is it maybe possible to use your talent do you love making art making movies do you love making different things and using that talent to spread the message to to get other people to talk about it to create debates and i think there are so many ways today to just put back at the center of attention the climate crisis. And I should also talk about the biodiversity crisis because it's really crucial today. But so if there are so many ways today to really use the talent and what you love doing to, to put that forward around you, whether it's 
only in your family or in your friends group, but that's already a lot. Amazing, thank you, Adelaide, for that. Um, okay, um, so we're going to wrap it up here um, as we're a little bit out of time. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for your thoughtful responses. Um, we're really grateful to learn from such a powerhouse of uh, activists and storytellers. Um, so to learn more about the campaign, um, the film, or other ways to take action, um, you can visit uh, the can, can you hear us .org, um, which is the impact campaign alongside uh, I am Greta, which young entertainment activists are running. Um, and you can see the link in the chat just there. Um, thank you, everybody. That's a real big privilege to be here with you all. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you.